Hello, my name is Dr. Philip Northover and I work with the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture as su Supervisor of the Crop Protection Laboratory. Much of my time is attempting to solve problems through disease diagnosis. Whether they be large-scale commercial producers of field crops or a producer of high-value greenhouse crops to treat diseases in a number of situations or the homeowner who is concerned with their garden. While all of these may be thought of as very different, the principles of diagnosis are the same for all of these plants. Any diagnosis begins with two important parts. One, a representative sample. Two, information related to the sample. An excellent disease sample should have the following. One, various stages of disease symptoms from light to severe and also specimens that are healthy. Two, if possible, include the roots as well. This is often impossible in the cases of tree specimens, but for most field crops, a good proportion of the root system is not that hard to collect. The second key component is information, which is just as vital as the sample itself. While this can take time, it is an important part of the process. Information that should be included with the sample. The plant parts affected, the symptoms observed and when they appeared, distribution within the plant population, the cropping history, when symptoms were first observed, any events in the area such as digging, changing of the soil grade, flooding, etc., or any chemical applications made such as herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, and fertilizer applications in the current and the previous years are also important to include. Field crops including cereals, oil seeds, and pulses can all be dug up with the entire root system intact. Removal of the plant by pulling on the stem is not always a good idea as the root system can be damaged in the process. Perennial crops such as alfalfa can develop extensive root systems which are not easily collected. However, the root crown and a few primary roots can still be collected, including the stems and shoots alone may not be enough. Vegetables. While there may be a temptation to include only the fruit, often the entire plant needs to be included, especially the roots. Trees, both shade and fruit trees, are the most difficult samples to submit and it is quite difficult to determine whether the location of symptoms observed on the plant is the part of the plant that should be collected. It is best to collect from areas of the tree where portions of the tree are exhibiting symptoms and have healthy appearing tissue. One leaf is rarely sufficient. There are no set rules as to how much should be submitted, but generally if the sample fits in your pocket, it probably won't be useful. Fruit. These can be the most difficult to submit as many are woody plants. When collecting, don't ignore leaves or branches which appear unusual. Often these parts of the plants may have the same pathogens that are responsible for the appearance of the symptoms on the fruit. Wrap specimens in a dry paper towel. If the sample includes a root system with soil attached, put this portion into a plastic bag and tie it off at the base of the stem. Submit the sample in a rigid container loosely packed in dry packing material such as newspaper. Packages may be dropped, crushed, or break open during shipment, so minimizing this is critical. Viruses are the exception. The Crop Protection Laboratory does not test for viruses on site, but we can send this work to other labs if necessary. The most important step is to include a submission form or a piece of paper with all your contact information, mailing address, phone number, and fax or email address. Then include the information requested earlier in this video. You can never include too much information. If you have any other questions, please check out the Ministry of Agriculture website at www.agriculture.gov.sk.ca or contact the laboratory directly by either phone or email. For the Crop Protection Laboratory, this is Dr. Philip Northover.